Hey guys, Purely Awesome Keeper here, and today I'll be teaching you the first step in how to solve a Pyraminx. So today I'll just be teaching you the notation, which is how to move it, and like what signals like mean to move what, and um, all the pieces, the tips, the edges, and the centers. So let's start off with notation. So you can move the tips, but I'm not going to really include that in notation because it's just the tips. All right, it's pretty easy to solve those. Oh no, they're mixed up. So yeah, I'm just going to talk about R, L, U, and B. And don't worry, I'll explain what that means. So R would be uh, moving this, this part. L is this part. U and B. So R, right, which would be this part, um, you would, like, if you see the letter R, that would mean to move this part of the pyraminx up, like that, right? And R prime, which would be an R with an apostrophe after it, would mean to move this part down. So R prime would be this, right? R R prime. Okay. Now L is kind of the opposite. So if you just see the L, that means to move this side down, right? Not up like R. It would be down because R means to move the right side clockwise, and L means to move the right si the left side clockwise. So they would be going in opposite directions. Now, L prime would mean to move the left side up, like that, right? And L with an apostrophe after it, so L, L prime, L, L prime, right? Clockwise, counterclockwise. So it would be like as if you, you're you facing that side with the point facing you, which you would never do when you're solving the pyraminx. You'd always want a side facing you, right? Never a point. So, those are R and L. Now, U would be this part, right? And U would mean to move the top side clockwise, right? U would be like that, U. And then U prime, U with an apostrophe after it, would mean to move the top side like that, counterclockwise, U prime, right? U, U prime. Now finally B would mean this back side. So to move the back side, right, B would mean to move the back side clockwise, as if you're facing it, clockwise. Right? So B clockwise and then B prime or B with an apostrophe after it would be counterclockwise, like that. B B prime. B B prime. Okay? So that is the notation now for the pieces. These four pieces are the tips, right? They'll always be tips, as edges will always be edges and centers will always be centers. And this tip, the green, red, and blue tip, will never, it can't be separated from the green, blue, and red centers unless you take it off, like you pop the piece off, which is kind of hard to do, but you can pop it off and then move it, but that's technically not legal in cubing. So you can't really do that, so this will always be with these three centers, no matter what you do to it, right? So, yeah. Same with all the other tips. Now for edges, they have two colors on them and could kind of be compared to the 3x3 three three edges as uh, tips could be compared to 3x3 three three corners, although there definitely are some differences considering the tips cannot move uh, anything like the corners of a 3x3 three three can. So the edges can pretty much be moved wherever you want, right? So they're pretty much very versatile. And yeah, so these are the edges. They'll always be on the outside though with always two colors on them. And then the centers, you'll know which pieces are the centers because they'll always be next to the tips, like like that, right? So this is a center, this is a center, and this is a center. 
and they'll always have one color and they'll always be next to that tip. Right, so center, 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 and then these three are centers, these three are centers, and these three are centers. Oh wait, hold on, sorry. These three are centers. It kind of looks like a nuclear sign a little bit, but I don't know, not really. Um, but yeah, so those are the pieces. And just a little tip, the way I move the left side and the right side, I just hold these two fingers on these centers and then my thumb on the bottom center, same over here, and it allows you to move them very quickly. And for the top, I just use this finger or this finger, like for this finger for clockwise, this finger for counterclockwise. And then for B, um, either I just turn the Pyramanx and turn it like this, right? or I use my ring finger to turn it like that. But as you can see, that's kind of difficult. So I'll probably just end up turning the Pyramanx. So yeah, that is the first step in how to solve a Pyramanx. And thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.